Do women exist for the gratification of men? Is a question I think has a very clear answer, but for some reason, whether it is those up in the European continent claiming no mere woman can exist in their top 40 characters, except Ichigo's dead mom, or the mountains of anime, manga, and just media in general that have a very toxic view of the role of women in society, you can't help but wonder if common decency is even common. However, the type of dynamic I want to look at is how anime use a female character to help a male character overcome their deepest of insecurities. On the outset, ReZero seems like the typical isekai experience. Literal lollygagging, harem antics, the works. And admittedly, it's that stigma that has kept me away from the genre on a greater scale. But if you look closer, ReZero is less of a male power fantasy and more of a male torture porn. But none of this is unwarranted. Our protagonist, Subaru, has main character syndrome. He's essentially immortal, an ability granted by a witch in need, and he's been transported into the type of world he would indulge in through video games he would play back home alone, in his room, self-exiled from everyone else. To him, it's just a game, a game that's given him the opportunity to actually do something with his life, and where the world can finally revolve around him. You might not pick up on this as his sense of humor is derived from self-deprecation, but how much of that is a cry for attention rather than an honest description of how he feels about himself is a shockingly thin line. Subaru is a sinful person. His pride makes him think he deserves things just by virtue of existing. He's too slothful to actually become someone who deserves those things. His wrath makes him throw tantrums when faced with pushback from the world, but he's too greedy to make that stop him from getting what he wants. I'm sure there are others, but we haven't gotten there yet. But like, Subaru isn't a bad person. He has qualities that are bad, caused by the insecurities cemented by his father's almost perfect masculinity, but he's still good. He makes a lot of mistakes, sure, one of those was thinking he's entitled to Amelia because of who he thinks she is and what he means to her, totally separate from who she actually is. But this scene, while making people cringe, has always been interesting to me. Cause Subaru isn't wrong. Maybe sometimes his motives are selfish or naive, but he's still a hero. He still wants to save others, and he does save others. He doesn't want people to die, cause why does someone like him get to live while others have to suffer through similar insecurities he's had to claw through? That's why the scene with Rem isn't this undeserved male fantasy. Subaru saved Rem. He got involved in something that wasn't his business because he cares for other people. He urged Rem to push on, even if the guilt of her weakness holds her back. So in return, she asked the same thing of him. Because honestly, the series isn't about resolving Subaru's selfishness or cleansing him of his sin, it's putting those sins in a light that can actually make him more aware of other people's feelings. And in season 2, it's about allowing other people to bear the burden of those feelings. Because being a hero isn't about allowing yourself to be used by a system that would quickly replace you, or being a tool that sacrifices his sense of self for others. Being a hero is about rescuing people while letting people rescue you. So when Neurality says, It is a man exposing the worst parts of himself to a woman, and then her unconditional love is the thing that saves him. Maybe if media could exist in a void, I wouldn't be so bothered by it. But as is, Subaru has just yelled at this girl for 10 minutes, and then she's had to do all the emotional labor to put him back together after his breakdown. I think they're severely overestimating how bad this scene actually is. The way the story uses Rem in the story is not only really respectful in my opinion, but at least compared to other stories, it has really good intentions for her. In the same way Subaru would do for her, hell, has done for her, Rem looks past all of the dirtiest qualities of Subaru and instead of berating him, which is in her right, she ushers him to never give up and be better. Because she believes he can. Her identity isn't tied to Subaru, she chooses to save him because he saved her. And if she was the only one in the cast who would do this for Subaru, maybe I would agree, but frankly she isn't. And Subaru does the same thing for others later. It's a cycle. I think that's what's missing with female characters. They just exist so they can pump out the main character of the sequel series. And that's not me saying that, because in the catacombs that I call the shonen manga experience, where every woman gives their entire being, life, heart, to the idea of saving that one special person they love with all of themselves, as the story does nothing to repay them, I don't know man, I think this is kind of a step up. 
And by repaying, I don't just mean allow them to get what they want, because usually what they want is the security of the man who hasn't given a crap about them the entire story until it's relevant. I mean being paid with a moment in the story that they're allowed to exist outside of their male counterparts. An example of that people usually give is Ochako, a character whose relationship to her favorite boy is one or two conversations in arc and no endgame material. Sorry anime onlys, but don't get your hopes up. Finally, a woman who can exist outside of the male main character. Except when she does, she makes an other embarrassment out of her goal and doesn't succeed in the slightest. And that's just one half of the new gen dynamic duo. I wish I can go into detail about how Jujutsu Kaisen treats its female cast, but let's just say if you're saddened by the lost potential of Nobara, just assume the same thing will happen to your favorite girl. Honestly, the best examples of good female characters we have in popular shonen right now are Chainsaw Man, with its women being the abusers and not the abusees for once, so there's that. Uh, Black Clover, where Noelle is probably the best character in the story because of the depth Tabata afforded her familial subplot, well, until he didn't. And Demon Slayer. Yo, what? What the? Why the f is that the clip that's playing? This is to say nothing about how the big three treat its women. If you're not hypersexualized in Bleach, you're lying in wait for a man. Whether it's the abusive brother who, despite the series never allowing a proper reconciliation for on screen, you're shown to be obsessed with the approval of, or having your willingness to being used be applauded by the story because that's what makes you have a heart. Yeah, women in Bleach can't really catch a break either. So take your pick. Would you rather a woman give and give until all that's left are boobs to squeeze, or a woman who tells a terrible person to stop being a terrible person? Bloody. Jeez, so this is like the Detroit of this universe? Is Detroit a decrepit wasteland infested with malnourished children and toothless hookers? Yeah, pretty much. Actually, you know what's funny? There's another anime out right now that has the whole male who's the emotional damsel in distress trope. Dandadan Dan is a lot of things. It's better than Chainsaw Man, for one. But for the most part, it's a really good zany romantic comedy. What happens when ADHD mids autism type shit. But in the first episode, it actually has what I'm talking about. See, Ken... Sorry, sorry, didn't mean to. Okoran is a loner. He's kind of a freak because he's so quiet and nerdy. His love for aliens comes from the fact that literally no one on Earth would want to be his friend. But that changes when a woman comes into his life. If it wasn't for Momo, Okoran could have definitely turned out like Subaru, an obsessive and secure Neek who only cares for himself. So obviously Momo is just a muse for Okoran's desires as a man, right? But that's not true at all. Cause again, in this instance, they save each other. Because as a Giru, no one really treats Momo properly. This is compounded by her also getting bullied as a kid, for her family's fascination with spirits and espers. So it's not like Momo only exists as someone whose entire being is about saving Okuran. They genuinely love each other, and their united special interests, along with the series' comedic shenanigans, ensure that they can't really be apart from one another because they would just be left in this big, scary sci-fi world by themselves. I gotta be honest, I don't think this is a male, female, or incel issue. A lot of media tend to relegate characters into a certain role, and those characters can never exist outside of those roles. But just because a person is kind enough to sway someone from their toxic behavior, that doesn't mean the value of that person plummets, and that they're just a vessel for other people. Being someone who helps, being someone who's able to forgive someone's worst tendencies so that they can be motivated to change for the better, doesn't have to come at the cost of who you are, your autonomy, or your happiness. It doesn't have to erase your worth. Not a lot of stories get that, but I'm so glad these at least do.